Welcome back to the Shovelhead Rebuild Series Part 4. Uh, we're taking a, a slight detour. Uh, as I had mentioned in the first video, the oil bag is broken right here at the weld. I'm going to have to remove this so it can be re-welded. Obviously, uh, first thing I want to do really quick is remove the coil right here. We'll notice, and for our records, remember that uh, the negative up top right here, I got blue. I got the white here, the two whites in the middle. And on the bottom is pink for my own notes, right? So I know where to plug them back in. So I'm going to just loosen these up, remove them now. If you haven't watched this series yet, be sure to click the link above and check it out. Start from the beginning. Also routed the wiring for this coil wrong too. I'm going to be fixing that as well. That'll be for later, but the coil's now removed. I'll put this out of the way. Be breaking tension on the uh, oil bolt here in the bottom of the bag with a three-quarter spanner. Mine's a little more complicated because the uh, weld is broken, as mentioned. There we go, tension's broke. We do the rest by hand. Yeah, it didn't work very well. Actually, actually didn't work out that bad. Gonna pull the filter too. And the dipstick. And the key. I'm gonna disconnect these top two hoses. I could see from my own personal reference that the, the smooth one goes to the return here at the filter and the textured one comes here to the front of the oil bag. We're now gonna remove the base for the battery tray. 7 sixteenths. Take the rubber pad out for easier viewing. Back screws are half inch. They all need to be loosened, as you see here. Wiggle this back. This bracket comes off nice and clean. I just got a cable tie on here, that's all. I'll just take it off with the relay. We're good. Place my hardware back on so I don't lose it. Make sure these aren't falling off. Okay, very good. And yes, this broken ground in Nakawa. Noticed I will fix this ground. I did see this. I broke this as I pulled it off. Though this piece is broken, I still need to remove it, obviously. Uh, this is going to be a little difficult because, again, uh, this has become disconnected. So, no, there it is. No counter resistance. But I got it. Just move. Just after this tab right here. Leave this hanging for now. And I have a hose, one last hose under here under the tank. This hose is in fact easier to remove right here from the pump and pull it all out with the hose itself. I'm going to do that. There we go. Let's let that drain on the floor. We have one more lower bolt right here right down here by the frame, by the starter. I'm gonna pull that. This one came out with the whole rubber dampener in one piece, but just the same. Because this rubber grommet was stuck on to the tank, I had a little extra trouble having to push this up and clear it and get it over. But now I did. This is not a normal part of the removal procedure. I'll admit, but you can see that I've cleared it. I got it onto the other side. That did take a while. You also see I've cleared the starter mount. Two bolts here, dropped a little, got the cable behind here. All the cables that were running across the front, I've moved out of the way. I don't want to rip any cables out. We can now see that the tank is forward. I still have this. Remove the uh, neutral signal right there. This hose is disconnected and pull the hose under 
to get it into an optimal position. Again, having to stop to make sure the cables don't bind up and over. And I can see this hose does wrap around, so I have to pull it that way. I've twisted the tank so that the hose falls around back. So I can pull it this way, give it another turn. And there we go. I've removed the tank, the oil tank here from the bike. Obviously, this is a, a good time to give this whole area complete inspection. I'll put this neutral signal back on so I don't forget it. Very nice. This, this went well. Albeit, I'll point out slightly easier than normal because I do not have uh, the little welded tab. This would have taken a bit longer to do if I had the welded tab. I'm going to go and start the clean out of this tank. I'm going to use some, some kerosene to break up what's in there. The value of this tank is about $160 all day long. This is a repop. Finding an original AMF tank is not only difficult, but cost prohibitive. We're going to see if we could just get this welded and call it a day. It breaks right here. Uh, because this is not visible, I think that this could be uh, um, welded up like really stout and not cause any further issues. I guess we'll find out. If I have to get a new tank, I'll get a new tank. Got my bolt back in the bottom. Be sure to do that first, right? Pouring some kerosene. Be sure to recycle. Also went and connected the bottom hose to the top, just so nothing would leak. Leak a little, and then I caught that, so no big deal. Because I was splashing it around. I'm gonna let this sit. I'm going to agitate it a bit, let it do its thing. A cup here on the container. I'm going to pull that hose off of the top so it could drain into the container. Best I'll drain from the nut. I just wanted to make sure that that passage in the hose was clear. And why did I drain it into this container? Because I have not looked at the bottom yet to see if the tank is clean. And if I throw away this kerosene into this oil collecting pan, I can't hardly pull it back out. So if I need it again, it's sitting here in this to, to keep working with it. I, I will say that I, I am concerned because I do have a metal debris. Now the cylinder walls still have a good cross hatching on them. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe the rings and that could be why some oil was blowing by. I'm gonna have to take a look at this, see what we got here. I'm gonna wash the slag and the kerosene. And I do see I do see metal shavings. Granted, this is an extremely a specific test. Very well could be could be the rings. It's not the not the pistons because this is magnetic, right? We can see this collecting on the magnet. Bring bring this inside for better lighting. Almost looks like little hairs, right? That's, that's binded. There's some of the dirt suspended into it, but it's firmly on the magnet there. See that? See how it jumps firmly right, right off my finger? Like little tiny hairs come right on, like the, the, the width of a hair. See that? Yeah, so we'll take a look. I know, again, the cylinder walls are good. Um, take a look at the, um, at the rings when we take the jugs off. That'll, that'll be for the next video. But we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go a bit lower into the engine. Um, I'm, I'm thinking uh, most likely it's the rings. As we have some oil blow by, we're gonna look at the, uh, the surfaces of the cam as well. So we'll see what's going on. I've cleaned it up. It'll now go with the prepared assembly parts. Tank came out really nice inside. Um, there's nothing left. It's like brand new almost. So I'm just going to uh, get the rest of that kerosene out. I'm going to start degreasing, get this whole tank nice and clean. That way I could uh, send it off to the welder for repair. Got some paper towel in there. Just moving it around with a screwdriver. Get whatever's remaining out of the tank. The tank is now completely dry inside. As you can see, there's nothing left in this tank. 
no oil, no kerosene. I'm now just going to uh, wash it and clean it. The tank is now clean and degreased. It's been washed. I'm going to leave it to dry in the sun to get all of the moisture out of it. I'm going to remove this hose too. And then when it is completely dry, I'm going to put just a, a little dash of 60 weight on the bottom and spread it around as a rust inhibitor just to get a little bit of oil protection on the bottom of the tank, just a smidgen. And then I'm going to leave this uh, uh, for the repairs. That's going to finish this portion of uh, the work as far as the oil tank is concerned. In taking off the battery tray, I realized that I had forgotten the lower mount. I did not remove the nut that was behind here, and I broke that rubber isolation mount right here. So I'll turn it around and we could see. Here is that mount. I probably could have removed it from here or the nut that I just showed, but I wanted to point that out because I did forget it. I do make mistakes. Oil bags heading over to Jason at Jason's Bug Ranch to be welded up. Take a little drive with me in the front seat here. Going to start now with a, a basic decrudding of the area. It's not fun, it's not quick, but I'm not going to work on dirty, nasty crap. So I'm going to be uh, cleaning this. I've covered up the engine area. I'm going to be covering up the lifters too as I get as I get closer. But right now I'm just starting in the back, working my way forward, getting dirt out of here. See everything's shaping up really nice, cleaning it up really good. Everything's done in a controlled manner. <clears throat> a couple areas of detail that I want to address before I hit the cables. The cables will be done too. Uh, all the connectors will be cleaned. They'll also get deoxid. We're, we're doing the full Monty here. We're not just, you know, doing the engine. We're going to control. We're going to check torque. We're going to do everything we possibly can while we're in here. Before I do the wiring, cleaning, and cleanup, I'm, I'm doing a, a rewiring a repair it's so far out of scope i'm not really going to include it in this video i'll just talk about it briefly once it's finished so i'm going to do that now all the cables have been controlled all the connectors have been cleaned uh we can see i've relocated the harness i haven't done anything else with it yet i'm not going to be able to until i have everything up here put back together so i know the exact size to cut it to but the job was successful and i'm happy with it Gonna hit another target of opportunity here. This is the transmission and it, it leaks like a sieve. It looks very nice now because I've been able to clean it up. What I wanna do is this, I don't wanna tighten it down. It, it, it's like 13 to 15 foot pounds for each one of these nuts is specification. I wanna do something different. I wanna take this opportunity. I got my inch pound wrench here and I have set it to 25 inch pounds, just over two foot pounds. What I want to do is hit each one of these and see if it clears too. I want to see if, if it stops or if it is actually under two foot pounds and determine if it's just a matter of it simply loose, right? And that's all it is. It might be, in fact, something that I should address with um, lock washers and not those terrible springy ones. There are some new ones on the market that do some pretty amazing things. And this might be one of those projects that I want to do as an opportunity while I'm here. Let's do that now. Okay, so it was good at two. Let me double it. Now I'm at 55. Seventy now. This one just about wanted to turn it 70. We'll do these at 76. Turns at 76. 76. 
76. So it turns out after testing, all of these bottom ones turn between 70 and 76 inch pounds. This is just over five foot pounds of torque, which is just about just about one third of the specification. So it's it's obvious why this thing leaks. It's because it's getting loose, right? I want to take a look and see if I can replace these these washers here with something better. I'm gonna to have to look online and see what I come up with. But this is, yeah, this is unacceptable. I, I don't think this whole thing needs to be dismantled to stop it from leaking. I think it just needs to not be loose. Just as an observation, uh, we're gonna to torque this thing to 160 foot-pounds, which falls into the range of appropriate for this thing. And we're gonna see how far off this thing is, right? There's one. The top ones aren't too terrible, right? The bottom ones are like, dear God. I can imagine what this one's gonna bring. See, that bad boy was loose. So at least it's it's now torqued to specification. I think with better lock washers and possibly new gasket, this would, this would not leak over here. It would leak in the usual places where it's supposed to leak because it's a Harley. This is the horn, and here's a positive connection. I, I've already disconnected it. This is gonna be cleaned up. We can see the ground strap coming across from this side uh, over to this side from the frame to make this ground connection. I decided to remove the three screws and take off this horn cover so I don't uh, go and mess it up. The metal piece brushed and cleaned up. Got the rust off at least the mating surface area there. Got this contact too, nice and shiny again. Got this ground strap over here shined up, it's ready for reassembly on this side. Everything's retightened back down, connectors back in, this side's all done. I'll just go and hit this side right quick. And this is gonna be just the same process as before. Just clean the mating surfaces and then deox it. This one had some oxidation on it. And there we go, horn's finished. I'm gonna be doing a lot of electrical connections like this. Consider this one right here, it looks benign. We can see a, a cable coming up, threads to this uh, screw here. I use a double nut to get this one off, being very careful not to actually break the mount. We look under there and we see that the whole cluster has got nothing more than a garbage ground that makes um, no connection to the frame whatsoever. There we go. So. We have a garbage ground. We're gonna clean that up, we're gonna fix it. This is in good condition for what it is, it's gonna be reused. We're gonna clean up the metal mating surface on the bottom of this dampener, so we have good contact to that connector. The metal shined up nice again. Got the ground all shined up again. Got these threads all cleaned out with deoxid. I'm just working this in and out, distributing it, and I'll be reconnecting that ground. That's it. And there you go, it's like nothing ever happened. A grounding issues on these old bikes are electrical problems that could take forever to find. You go through each one of these wires and clean these connectors, actually saves you a lot of time in the long run. Everything here connected to the relays can be disconnected, cleaned up, and then reconnected to the relays. These are crusty. Everything is ready to be cleaned up here. All cleaned up. I just continue on this process till all of them are done. All the connection is nice and shiny. Uh, this will have a tremendous impact on the performance of the electrical system of this bike. If you look under this rubber cover, we could see the connections to the solenoid. We got three connections here. One that makes the connection on the high tension wire and this low current wire here that actuates the solenoid. Uh, if need be, these are also up and up and connected. These were recently done on mine. I checked these out, so these are okay, but these would be uh, cleaned in the same fashion. We're going to now repair this particular connection, the brown cable that had broken off during the disassembly. I'm just going to take out this nut right here first, remove the old connector. Now I'm going to size this connector up for replacement. These will be cleaned up and returned right back onto the bike. 
There we go. Now, I know my own strength. As it's ground, we'll try it without the plastic. Unbelievable. I'm going to throw some lead through this after I crimp it. Once it gets hot enough, it wicks in. There it goes. That'll hold. Also, I got two more rubber mount studs arrived to repair the two. Uh, one that broke and one that I broke or possibly broke. So those will be going in too. Uh, later as part of the uh, reinstallation assembly of the bike. The oil tank is now repaired. I just got it back from Jason, picked it up from his house, did an outstanding job. Jason, thanks a lot for that. As I had previously stated, if I was able to get a hold of the correct Nordlock washers uh, for this project, I was going to at least get done uh, a test case for the transmission side cover before the end of this video and somebody on the forum uh, was able to give me the part number I required. This is for the 516th article number 1523. There is some discussion that needs to be had about uh, the use of these because of the way that they function under a torque wrench. So we're just gonna get into that really quickly. We'll, we'll talk about it really quick and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take off uh, each of them one by one and retorque them with the new values using these Nordlocks. I have 20, so I should be able to cover uh, this entire job with no problem at all. They also provide some documentation. Probably wouldn't be a terrible idea for me to go and uh, take a look and see what they say about some of the nuances of this type of thing. Somewhere in this is gonna be English or German. This only tells about what we already know about what they do. It doesn't uh, tell about any specific operation. So yeah, I'm gonna go and check online and make sure that uh, I'm, I'm following this properly, that I'm doing exactly as, as specified, that nothing has changed. It's a good thing I checked this stuff. I went online with Nordlock and come to find out that uh, in using their fastening system, if you use the same torque value, you end up with about a 10 to 20% reduction in the actual torque value of the nut onto the stud. Uh, this is absolutely fine. Uh, in knowing this, I'll be increasing uh, the torque value on the torque wrench. So yeah, there it is. I opted for 190. The reason why I chose 190 is 190 is exactly 15.8 foot-pounds. These nuts are supposed to be tightened within 13 to 16. That means if I was entirely wrong, I'm still within specification. If during the tightening, it actually gets up to that maximum torque, I'm still within specification. And when you look at that value on face value and take that 15.8 foot-pounds and you subtract 10%, you end up with 14.2, which brings it right in the middle and right where my original uh, setting was where I wanted it to be. If you uh, drop down uh, 20%, which would be uh, an extreme case, it would still keep it in specification. So that's why I chose 190 to stay within the ranges. I'll be turning them out. This one's already loose. I've used this one for sizing. Just pull the washer. Drop on the Nord lock. Drop on the nut. No oil, no Loctite. There we go. I'm gonna do all of the rest of them in the same fashion. Since I'm only loosening one at a time, there is no sequence. I don't have to do them in any star configuration. I'm loosening up one, I'm retightening it down, I'm moving on to the next one. For the bottom ones, I was sure to clean out the thread work as well as the stud before reapplying these nuts onto the studs. So this is it. I think I'm about finished for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I've covered a lot of different small items that I wanted to get done on this motorcycle. There's a lot more to do. So I'll be posting another uh, link above here to click on as more videos come out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?